so I don't want to read more. Oh, things are falling out of the book. It's the thank you card. Baby cover. Love. Baby cover. What? Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my August 2017 wrap-up. I read a total of 13 books. It is only August 29th right now, so I still have two more days. I'm splitting this into two parts. So, by the time part two comes out, I may have read 14 books, but we'll see in part two. So, this is part one. So, without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I read for the month of August was Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I have a full review of it up over there if you want to check it out. This was actually the book I was supposed to read for July for the book club that Dylan and I host. Which we are doing a terrible job with, but you know that's a whole other story. I really really enjoyed this book and I highly recommend it and I'm not going to talk about it because review. The second book that I read for the month of August was The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena and I absolutely love this book. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Highly recommend it if you're into thrillers. The book follows Anne and Marco Conti who attend their next door neighbor's dinner party. They had originally hired a babysitter to watch their newborn daughter Cora and the babysitter ends up canceling on them so they decide that they will bring a baby monitor to the next door neighbor's party and that they will still attend and have a grand old time but still check up on Cora occasionally. Upon returning home that night, Cora is missing from her crib and it's basically the story of them trying to solve who took their child. I think that the book was insanely addictive. I couldn't put it down. It wasn't anything like thought-provoking or like life-changing. It was just really entertaining. It was fast-paced and suspenseful and definitely kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. There were a lot of plot twists that I didn't see coming, but there were also a lot of plot twists that I did see, so it was like a good balance between the two. And the cliffhanger at the end is just like... I definitely wish that there was an epilogue so we know what happened in the end because you're left just sitting there like, wait, what? I definitely think that this is my favorite thriller of the year so far. October is going to be like my month of thrillers, so we'll see if that holds, but real good. Highly recommend. The third book that I read for August was No Use of a Name by Penelope Wright, and I was actually sent this book by the author in exchange for my honest review, so thank you to Penelope. I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows 15 year old Baby Anderson who is the youngest daughter of 5 to her absent parents. She never thought anything of her nickname until she goes to the DMV to pick up her driver's permit and finds out that she's never actually been given a real name on her birth certificate. Baby is starting at a brand new school this semester so she decides that she's going to try on a bunch of different names in order to find out who she really is. It is really easy to read, the writing flows, I just didn't like it as much as a lot of other people have. The book is very fast paced and I just personally didn't think that much happened in the book. It's more of a coming of age story which I don't often read. I read more thriller suspense so because there was no thriller suspense I was kind of bored with the story. In my opinion there wasn't much of a plot. I don't think anything exciting happened. It was more trying to figure out who was related to who and it just became very confusing to me after a while. But I did think that the character development in the story was very well done and I really enjoyed that aspect of the story. The next book that I read was Station Fossa by Dee Gartson and I was also sent this book in exchange for my honest review. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Quinn who dreams of being a scientist like his mother but his grandfather the Admiral has different plans for him. Quinn begins studying the planet Fosan where he lives with the rest of his family after the apocalypse wiped out most of civilization there. He meets a Fosanian named Mira and they quickly become friends. They discover that Ashan, who is the leader of the Fosanian clan, is planning to attack the Earthers and take over the planet. So with the help of his friends Lainey, Decker, and Mira, Quinn decides that he is going to stop Ashan before it is too late. So as I said, I only gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. I think that some of the pacing in the book was too slow for my liking and it seemed to drag on, but then other places were very fast-paced and interesting to me. It took quite a bit for the story to become exciting to me, so that was a very big drawback because I like the excitement and the thrill and I wasn't getting it 
in the beginning half of this book. The cast of characters were really well done in this book. I think that they all had their own flaws that made them a lot more believable. I think that Quinn was a great main character who's very strong and compassionate and I really liked him. I really liked Mira and how she stood up to her uncle when she didn't agree with the things that he was doing and 100% my favorite character was Mags who is Quinn's parrot. And like, I don't know if this is a bad thing that a parrot was my favorite character or not but like she was so funny. I loved every single scene with her in it. I do wish that there was more background on the history between the f planet Fossan and Earth and why there was such a miscommunication and hatred between the two of them because we don't get any of that so I was kind of confused a lot of the time why the species hated each other. Overall, super quick read, super fun. I enjoyed it but it wasn't anything like incredible to me. The next book I really did not like very much. But it is London Calling by Edward Bloor and I ended up giving this a 1 out of 5 stars. The book follows 13 year old Martin Conaway who inherits a old radio from his nana when she passes away and he finds himself time traveling through the London Blitz during World War II. He meets a boy named Jimmy who asks for his help in delivering a message to his father in the present day, James Hawkins. And the story kind of takes on from there and how Martin is traveling back and forth trying to figure out this message and how he's going to deliver it to the father. I personally found this book completely boring. Nothing happens. I just did not enjoy any second of it. Most of the time I was sitting there rolling my eyes being like, okay, can something interesting happen? Nothing did. So, one out of five stars. I wouldn't recommend it, but like if you're into history, then you'll probably enjoy it. But personally, that's not my thing, so... Boring. The next book that I read I really enjoyed. I thought it was super cute and fluffy and it is The Museum of Heartbreak by Meg Letter. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I definitely enjoyed this one a lot. This book follows 16 year old Penelope Marks who has experienced her first heartbreak. Keats, the popular new boy in her school, is finally paying attention to her but in the process of this new relationship her best friend Audrey is growing increasingly distant from her. Not to mention her other best friend F is becoming increasingly moody and distant towards her as well and Penelope doesn't know why. Things are definitely changing in their social triangle and Penelope has to begin to navigate her new life. The book is super quick to read, it's super fluffy, it's super cute, the writing style is great and quirky and I found myself laughing out loud for a lot of it. There's also little illustrations at the beginning of each chapter. Watch me not be able to find it because like that's how my life works right now so I'm just gonna flip until I find one. See? There, okay. So as you can see there's little like illustrations for each chapter saying like what the chapter is about. Kind of reminds me of Why We Broke Up by Daniel Hadler, how there was always the illustrations, and I loved that part of the book, so obviously I'm gonna like it in another book. The book is very predictable. You're able to call a lot of things that are going to happen and how the book is going to end, but I still really enjoyed it. I think that Penelope is a super relatable character. She's quirky and weird and just, I loved her so much. F is definitely one of my new book boyfriends. I think he is such a sweetheart baby angel unicorn. He's so supportive and compassionate towards Penn and everything that she does. I really liked Grace and Miles as characters. I think they were great additions to the story. I hated Keith, Audrey, and Charisse. I think they're all terrible human beings and I don't want them to be on this planet Earth because they pissed me off. The final book that I'm going to talk about during part one of my August wrap-up is The Haven by Carol Lynch Williams. Again. I did not like this book. I give it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It was real boring. This book follows Shiloh who is a terminal and she and her friends reside in the Haven Hospital and Halls which protects terminals from the outside world which is a very terrifying place because a disease is threatening everybody's bodies in Earth. Shiloh begins to discover that things aren't exactly what they seem to be and what she's been told her entire life is not entirely true. So with the help of her friends Gideon, Daniel, and Abigail, she plans to escape. So although the book was very fast-paced, I thought it was super predictable, nothing really happened, it was really boring in my opinion, and I just didn't like it at all. The world building was very vague and there wasn't really much of a plot to follow. Most of the time, I wasn't 100% sure what was even going on. I don't feel like I connected to any of the characters. They were all very bland and boring to me. I wasn't really upset when anything happened to them. I wasn't invested in the story at all. So 1.5 out of 5 stars. I wouldn't recommend it if I were you, but it is a super quick read. So I mean, that's 
one thing it's got going for it. Alright guys, so that was part one of my August wrap-up. I think I talked about seven books. Honestly, I don't know, your girl doesn't keep track of these things. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!